Hello everyone, welcome to the Street Crime UK YouTube channel. Thank you for joining us. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more exciting content. Today we'll be taking an in-depth look at a notorious English gangster and underworld figure, Mr. Anthony Thomas Lambrianu. Mr. Lambrianu was known for his association with the Cray Twins, although being nearly 10 years their junior. Anthony, who was better known as Mr. Tony Lambrianu, was an underworld figure who achieved a peculiar 20th century celebrity status for his association with two of Britain's most notorious criminals, Reggie and Ronnie Cray. In his time, he had been a violent career criminal who had been attracted to the glamour and easy pickings of the Cray crime syndicate, but he acquired more status and respect for his loyalty to the Crays, even after they were dead, than for any of his criminal exploits. Born in Bethnal Green in 1942, Mr Lambrianu grew up around Howland Street, Fitzrovia, London, with his father Christos Lambrianu, a Greek Cypriot, and Lillian Lambrianu, an Irish Catholic, who married in Camden on the 24th of June 1965. Having spent five years of his childhood in the County Durham town, Mr Lambrianu was proud of his North East roots. Then moving to Soho, he was then soon evacuated to the Midlands during the war with his brothers. His father Christopher was a Cypriot who had been sold into slavery at the age of 12. He had escaped in Egypt and arrived in England as a teenager. He found work during the First World War in a Newcastle munitions factory, after which he trained as a chef in London. A highly successful gambler in the late 1930s, Christopher Lambriano brought a restaurant in Charlotte Street in the West End. At this time, he was also drafted into the RAF, and was sent to work in the same Newcastle munitions factory, where he met and married Lillian, the daughter of a strict Roman Catholic farming family from Consett. By 1945, he had acquired another restaurant in Charlotte Street, and seemed set for prosperity. However, two years later, a rat was discovered in one of the restaurants, and Christopher killed it by pouring boiling water over it. At the High Court, he was found guilty of animal cruelty and was forced to sell the restaurants to pay the massive legal costs. The family fortunes took a nosedive from which they were never able to fully recover. Christopher picked up whatever casual kitchen work was available, but this did not prevent the family enduring a spell in the South London workhouse. In 1949, the Lambriano family was rehoused in a flat in a bomb-ravaged Haggerston, not far from Tony's birthplace in Bethnal Green. Despite Lillian's ferocious defence of her sons, immersed in poverty and the detritus of war, the Lambriano brothers quickly acquired a reputation as tough guys and petty thieves. As a child, Tony was not averse to hard work, and from the age of eight he had supplemented the family purse by working for a coal merchant and by selling sheets of race results. By the time he left school at the age of 14 to work for a local bed manufacturer, the Lambriano brothers, despite their hard-working, strict and religious parents, were well established as thieves and fighters, and a more exciting world of dance halls, violence, scams and gangs beckoned them. Tony Lambriano left the bed factory and made his money from thieving and protection, and eventually received his first conviction for burglary in 1960. The violence became more extreme and Mr Lambriano thrived as an all-purpose moneymaker, stealing, running protection rackets and working as both a bookmaker's runner and a thug who would do most tasks at £50 per day. He received another conviction in 1961 for housebreaking, resulting in a three-year probation order. Mr Lambriano, who was born in the East End of London, was the third of five sons born into his family. However, despite Mr Lambriano's strict upbringing, he and his brothers soon began to develop a reputation as thieves and fighters who eventually progressed into UK gangland crime. Named after saints, Mr Lambriano's life was far from saintly. As time went on, Tony progressed up the ladder by running protection rackets and being involved in other activities which included being a bookmaker's runner. By this time, Mr Tony Lambrianu and his brother Mr Chris Lambrianu were well known and attracted the attention of Mr Ronnie and Reggie Cray. Tony married a cab driver's daughter, Miss Pat Strack, in 1962 and that year became a father for the first time. Altogether, he had one son and one daughter with Miss Pat. In 1963, he received his first prison sentence 18 months for stealing a car, but was released on appeal nine months later. Tony's older brother Chris was busy forging an even more formidable reputation for reckless and violent adventurism, and both Chris and Tony eventually attracted the attention of the gangsters Mr Reg and Mr Ron Cray. Three years younger than his brother Chris, Tony began to establish himself as a criminal around the Dalston and Hagerston area during the early 1960s. Tony had a small gang consisting of close associates and his younger brother Jimmy, and would visit the dance halls and nightclubs, earning money from protection and other criminal acts, where he would 
be earning around £140 a week. The twins and the Alambriani brothers were aware of each other as early as the late 1950s, but had not become close associates until the latter end of the 1960s. Mr Lambriano lived with his wife Pat just off of Bethnal Green Road in Blythe Street, where he became a fringe member of the notorious London gang, The Therm. By the early 1960s, the Crays were well established in the east and west ends of London, and were always on the lookout for up-and-coming criminal talent. The Lambrianos would also appreciate the benefits of association with such a potent brand as the Cray Twins, and they found that they could make good money with minimal effort by just merely uttering the twins' name. In 1965, Tony received a prison sentence of 30 months for assault with intent to rob. By 1967, Tony Lambriano had six convictions, including shot breaking and assault with intent to rob. He was released from his last prison sentence in November 1966, and on his release became closely associated with the event that was to mark the demise of the Cray firm. In 1967, Tony Lambriano and his brother Chris were told they needed to lure Jack McVitie to the basement flat of 97 Evering Road in Stoke, Newington, London for a party. Mr McVitie had been recently drunk and had been waving a shotgun around the Regency. He had threatened the twins in his drunken rambling. Mr McVitie had been a nuisance and embarrassment to the Cray twins for quite some time, and in the chaotic atmosphere that enshrouded the firm, in the wake of the Cray engineered prison escape and subsequent killing of Mr Frank Mitchell, Ron's shooting of Mr George Cornell, and the suicide of Reg's wife Miss Frances, a further violent escalation was now inevitable. Furthermore, Mr McVitie had recently bungled a shooting for which the Crays had paid him to do. His final mistake was threatening the twins after ripping them off on a drug deal. Tony Lambriano, along with most of the Cray firm, assumed that a punishment beating would take place. But Reggie Cray had produced a handgun which had failed to fire, and so wanting to cause serious harm, he proceeded to butcher Mr McVitie with a carving knife. The Lambrianos assumed responsibility for getting rid of the body which was wrapped in a bedspread and placed in Mr McVitie's car. Tony said that when they moved Mr McVitie's body, the liver fell out and had to be burnt in the fire. Chris reckoned the liver had been skewered out. Tony then drove the car to St Mary's Church in South London, where the body was later picked up by Mr Freddie Foreman and apparently given an informal burial at sea. When in 1968 the entire Cray firm was mopped up by a special squad of detectives, Tony Lambriano found himself under a media spotlight. The ensuing trial at the Old Bailey saw several key members of the firm turn Queen's evidence informants. While the Lambriano brothers remained staunch, tight-lipped throughout all proceedings, the brothers received life with a 15-year recommendation before being considered for parole. Many members of the firm turned Queen's evidence and testified against the twins, but Tony and Chris stood by their principles and defended their honour by remaining silent and completely loyal to their gang bosses. Mr Lambriano served 15 years in jail for his part in the murder of Jack the Hat McMitty in 1967, when he was aged 26. At the start of his sentence for his part of the murder of Mr McVitie, Tony was a 26 year old father of two and he was about to serve some very hard time. Three of his 15 years were spent in punishment blocks as a result of various assaults, riots and thefts. For a decade the Cray twins ruled the East End with an iron fist sipping champagne with Miss Judy Garland and Miss Barbara Windsor while leaving a trail of blood and broken bones in their wake and East End gangster Mr Tony Lambriano was the man forced to clean up that mess. It was a dark and dangerous job. Mr Lambriano and his brother Chris were close to shooting two police officers to escape after the craze forced them to dump the body of hitman Jack the Hack McVitie in October 1967. The infamous murder forms the chilling climax of the much anticipated new film about the twins, which stars Tom Hardy as both Ronnie and Reggie Cray. Ex-EastEnders star Jamie Foreman remembers them looking after him at the snooker hall while his father Freddie, an enforcer for the twins, did their dirty work. The Lambriano brothers reluctantly agreed to help the crazed driver, Ronnie Bender, take the body south of the river and dump it on a railway line so a train would obliterate it. But Mr McVitie's body was too big to fit into the boot of his car. Tony would drive Mr McVitie's car with the bleeding corpse on the back seat. Chris was following in his car with Mr Bender. Mr Lambriano says that he was hoping the nightmare wouldn't get any worse, but it did. They were sitting at a red light when a police car with two officers pulled up behind Tony. They thought they were going to pull him over. Chris had a gun in his pocket, 
So there he was, ready to kill two policemen and orphan their kids to save himself. Luckily, the police car turned off at the next junction, and Tony was allowed to drive on until the car ran out of petrol outside a church in Rotherhithe, deep in Foreman's territory. On his release in September 1983, Tony faced a more complex world than the one he had left behind. Both of his parents were dead. His brother Chris, who had discovered religion whilst in prison, and was released on the same day, became a market gardener. Tony clashed with his wife, and with his by then grown up children. Divorce and serious illness followed, and in the late 1980s, Tony Lambrianu began a relationship with Miss Wendy Mason, whom he later married. Tony Lambrianu was a passionate keeper of the Cray Flame, and was willing to defend their most indefensible crimes. He campaigned for the release of the twins, and even after their deaths, was always available to speak to the mass media in never less than glowing terms on their behalf. He often spoke of a set of underworld ethics, that now seem as dated as bowler hats and bubble cars. He was most eloquent about traditional family values. If you didn't have a family of brothers with you, you were nothing, he said. Brothers were your strength. Mr. Lambriano knew all about brothers. In 1991, Tony published an autobiography, Inside the Firm, the untold story of the craze, Reign of Terror, and more recently, co-authored with Mr. Freddie Foreman, Getting It Straight, Villains Talking, in 2001. The public's enormous fascination with 1960s gangland increased throughout the 1990s, and he became a highly visible celebrity at boxing matches and charity events. In 1995, Tony collaborated with a latter-day Cray associate, Mr. Steve Rafe, in raising thousands of pounds for the Gateshead Burns victim, Terry Moran. Patsy Manning was given a good kicking by the twins muscle Tony and Chris Lambriano, after pocketing money which had been given to him to visit an inmate in Parkhurst Prison. The potentially fatal rift between Mr. Manning and the mob was revealed in Tony Lambriano's book, Inside the Firm, The Untold Story of the Cray's Reign of Terror. Tony described how he and his brother Chris, both enforcers for the twins, were tasked with giving Mr. Manning a slap. Mr. Lambriano recalled that there was an incident, for example with Patsy Manning, the twins had taken the hump, and after giving him money to go and visit a certain individual in Parker's prison, Mr. Patsy didn't bother going to visit the man, but went out drinking instead. The Lambriano brothers didn't know anything about this at the time, but the twins found out, and Ronnie said to them, tell Patsy Manning we want to see him. Tony went to Birmingham and spoke to Patsy, offering to bridge the divide between him and the twins. One night, back in London, Tony went out to a pub called the Old Horns in Bethnal Green. When he walked into the pub, the twins were there with a couple from the firm and Mr. Patsy Manning. He was standing well away from them. He went over to say hello, and Ronnie said, invite Patsy Manning round to a party. If the twins were upset with anyone, an invitation to a party was a very dangerous thing, but Ronnie was right to be annoyed. Mr. Patsy was collecting money to visit the prison, and he wasn't doing it, even though he knew what he was dealing with. Leave it to us and we'll take care of it up in Birmingham, said Tony, and Ronnie agreed. As long as it's taken care of, we'll leave it to you. A couple of nights later, the brothers came out of the Cedar Club and got into the car. They pulled up at the traffic lights, and Patsy Manning drove up alongside them. They hadn't been making themselves busy to find him. They knew where he lived, and they knew his brother Alan, who owned a well-known club called The Wheel. They didn't want to make an issue of it. If they came across him, he would get a right-hander, and that would be the end of it. They both stopped at the lights, and Chris jumped out of the motor, saying, Look who's here. He got in beside Mr. Patsy, and they followed Tony to Patsy's flat. They went indoors, and Chris gave him a dig, which bust his eye open, telling him, You know why you're getting this, over the man you should have been visiting, and you're taking the dough off everyone for. They gave him a right kicking. After coming out of prison, Tony became a regular at charity events, and jumped at the chance to return to the area in 1995, and again in 98 to attend fundraisers organised by Mr. Wraith, to help two local youngsters. Mr. Rafe said, I first got to know Tony because of my connection with the craze, and when I suggested he might like to come to Tyneside to support the events, he didn't even hesitate. He was proud of being part of Geordie and loved the Geordie people. His parents had both died when he was in prison, and he never got the chance to go to their funerals. When I got to know Tony and his connection to the Northeast, I located his mother's grave for him and arranged for him to visit it and pay his last respect. In 1995, he collaborated with Mr. Race to raise thousands of pounds for Gateshead Burns victim Mr. Terry Moran. He he also helped Mr. Wraith with his own book, The Craze, The Geordie Connection. Mr. Wraith acted as security guard at Ronnie Cray's send-off in 1995, and one of his roles at Mr. Lambriano's funeral 
was to stand guard over the coffin to stop ghouls snatching photographs. Tony died in 2004 at the age of 61 from a heart attack and was given the traditional gangster funeral send-off and was laid to rest at New Southgate Cemetery in London. Whatever the case, Tony Lambriano's name will live on as one of the firm. Old school UK gangsters had a rule that people only did what they had done to their own kind. The everyday public was safe from their activities. The East End of London came out in force for the funeral of former Cray henchman Mr. Tony Lambriano. Mad Frankie Fraser, Charlie Richardson and Freddie Foreman all paid homage to him. A white wreath spelling out the single word gentleman was on one side of the hearse with a floral tribute reading good man on the other side. Tony was an old school gangster and films like Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels and Snatch probably used Tony as an inspiration. When he was released from prison, he could have tried to piece his life back together, but he did the reverse and decided to maintain the gangster image, regularly going to celebrity parties. Crime had been his life and in 1991 he published an autobiography inside the firm and in 2001 co-wrote with Freddie Foreman getting it straight villains talk. The gangster's ex-wife Pat also revealed in an exclusive interview that Mr Lambriano was a fool guy for the craze who then betrayed his underworld loyalty. It would have been a false move to testify against Ronnie and Reggie Cray at their murder trial so fellow mobster Tony Lambriano kept his mouth shut and spent 15 years in jail. In an exclusive interview she opened up her secret stash of letters from jailed Mr Lambriano. One says Pat I will mention it just this once and never again. I'm innocent of this charge and will fight it for the rest of my life and I will win it in the end. Wait and see. Pat tells how she was left to fend for herself with their two children when the Cray twins were jailed and she was abandoned by the mob. Pat, who was 73 at the time, said Tony always said that he was innocent. He was told to take Jack to the party so he could sort out an argument with the Crays. He had no idea that they were going to kill him, but he just kept quiet. He always said, you can't be a grass in the East End of London. Tony felt that he was a fool guy for the Crays. The Lambrianos were given the job of taking small-time crook Mr McVitie to a flat in Stoke, where they thought the Crays planned to give him a beating for failing to carry out a hit. Instead, Reggie attacked Mr McVitie with a carving knife whilst Ronnie held him. Tony Lambriano was given the job of disposing of the body. It was the culmination of a decade of violence for the Cray twins, who ruled London's East End while mixing it with stars, sipping champagne with actresses such as Judy Garland and Barbara Windsor. In letters that were penned in HMP Brixton the night before his sentence, Mr Lambriano told Pat, who still lives in East London, well, Pat, as you know, there is only one sentence I can get, but to me it will mean nothing in the sense of the word. I only hope you take the same attitude as I do. Pat, please God, be strong and have courage as I'm sure you have. The road ahead is going to be tough, but it will smooth itself in the end. Pat was just a naive 16 year old schoolgirl when she met Tony at the Tottenham Royal Dance Hall in 1958. She remembers an easygoing and quiet young man. Four years later in August 1962 they tied the knot during a modest ceremony at the Old Street Register office. But when Mr Lambriano met the Cray twins with his brother Chris over a drink at the Regency Club in Hackney, their lives went into a downward spiral. The Crays with their associates and their empire of pubs and clubs became the focus of a huge police probe led by a top cop Leonard Nipper Reed. Pat said, I remember when he was arrested. I'd been working overnight as a cleaning supervisor and got home at 6am. At 10am the doorbell rang and I looked at the window and there were police cars and police everywhere. I knew it was serious and that's when my normal life just finished. That night changed my life forever. To this day, Tony said, don't worry, don't worry, I'll sort it, but he never came home. Nipper Reed offered him the chance to help the prosecution. But like Tony always said, there was no way you could be called a grass living in the East End. Pat said when Tony was released from jail in 1983, he wasn't the same man. Prison had taken its toll. She said that he became abusive and attacked her repeatedly. She filed for divorce and got a restraining order the following year. Despite the Cray's glamorous reputation, Pat remembers them not as Robin Hoods, but as cheats intent only on their own gain. She said, it angers me now. They ruined my life. We had nothing. We'd go to the laundrette to keep warm and they never gave us anything. We were abandoned. Everyone thought that because Tony went to prison, people would say, you must be all right, he was with the craze. Don't tell me they never looked after you, but they never did. Not a single penny changed hands. Staying loyal to the craze didn't help at all. People said that they were the Robin Hoods of Bethnal Green, but that was nonsense. Not in my eyes. They were out for themselves. I blame the craze for everything. What do you think about the crimes committed by Mr Lambriano? Do you agree that he should have kept his loyalty towards the craze? Let us know what you think in the comments below and stay tuned for more interesting videos coming your way. Don't forget to watch the videos on the twins, Mr McVitie and Mr Foreman to understand the full picture. 
And as always, stay safe.